Hey, Hello. Corey. Hey. Hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? Great to, uh, great to talk to you. Going well. It's, um, I'm from actually Bloomington, Indiana. Probably the most atheist place in Indiana because of uh, Indiana University. So does that mean there's and, two uh, atheists there? <laughs> I think it's up to four now, and um, we are starting a club. Yeah. 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 Nice. Have you contacted the... <laughs> We're happy to advertise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I've been listening to your guys' show for a long time. I've wanted to call in, and, uh, you know, I don't want to waste too much of your time as I'm an atheist, um, but I wanted to, you know, briefly just kind of share uh, an experience I had. Whenever I was uh, 16 years old, mm -hmm. I was um, sentenced on. by a judge uh, as a juvenile to uh, illegally, which it ended up being illegally, sentenced to a, a, I don't know if I can say the organization, but to a, a, what, what is essentially a Christian cult camp in Arkansas. Very random. But I was sent there as a Christian, I believe, at the time in my life. And this place, I'll tell you what, they should really just be in the business of making people not believe. Because I was really put in the position where I had to decide whether or not um, you know, these fundamentalist Christians who went by the book more than everybody I was raised around yeah. are just wrong. And, um, and it kind of forced the hand. And, um, a lot of the, the reason why I want to share it is because of the news recently with, you know, all the political, uh, devices, political things going yes. on. Uh, a lot of times what gets mentioned is the conversion camps. And I realized after, the fact now i'm 30 now but uh, i realized years later i was in a conversion camp i met homosexuals there who were being told that they were some of them were possessed or uh i mean there were everything but hey you were just born gay and um yeah. it was you know, really really terrifying to be honest yeah it's almost like there was information that uh, people came up with that they pass on from generation to generation uh, that yes. hurts people and isn't uh, remotely accurate as far as the world is concerned. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I think that I want people, um, I kind of wanted to get on here too to kind of uh, represent for Indiana and I want people to know, I know people in Indiana, uh, I've, I've met a lot of atheists. I'm one of the more outspoken. I, I do a lot of... Uh, you, I, I, I have adopted your street epistemology. I, I do that a lot here in my town. And uh, I don't record it. I don't think I'm ready to be any kind of representative for it. But I, uh, I am practicing, and it's, it's been a while now. And I want people to know in Indiana that, you know, you are totally not alone. I think a lot right. of people are scared yeah. to come out and, and just say, hey, I'm atheist. But if you do, I'm, I can attest. Many, many people reach out to you and say, hey, yeah. me too. So, Dude, that's awesome that you're yeah. doing that, man. We, I, it's it's some, doing something like that. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you have to have the money. It doesn't mean that you have to be busy every single day. But reaching out and saying you're not alone is so yeah. big. Yeah. Corey, thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's hey, one of the main benefits guys. of the show, actually. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, and, so um, I'm going to get on my high horse just a little bit here. I'll be minimally preachy, but... Being sentenced to uh, mandatory Jesus stuff uh, is not an isolated incident. It happens all the time in the United States. Google it. It's bad. Because, okay. you know, there's so, not yeah, enough bad I, news. So that's to the... Obviously, Corey, you know what I'm talking about. But because um, it happened to you, and we're sorry to hear that. Yeah. But yeah. also, congratulations on deconversion. I, I'm actually really glad it did, though, mm. to be honest. Yeah. I, uh, I, I remember when it was happening, I thought, I mean, I would cry like every night. I, I was like confused. I'd never been to the South. I didn't realize that the South was so fucked. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I, I, got, I got beat up. One time I heard these guys talking about how, uh, how the South should have won the war or something along those lines. And I was joking because I didn't realize there was still any tension with this, you know, being that we're all Americans now. We're not mm -hmm. called the Confederate States of America. But um, we, I went up and I said, hey, guys, let's not forget who won the war. And I laughed and they all jumped me. They just, they just all started to get it. They just jumped me. I mean, and uh, I realized after that, that this wasn't necessarily... <laughs> We haven't moved on from this nope. very much, and it's I have like, no idea. It's almost like there was a level of 
tribal, clan, our group, their group, stuff that was passed on mm-hmm. from generation to generation that was harmful <laughs> and not related to reality and, and taught. It causes it's, yeah, uh, it's almost, strife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's almost uh, like if everyone thought of themselves of, as human first, that would be. Good. Yeah. And you guys were also talking about the holidays and Christmas in the beginning of the show. And I know one of your patrons said they wanted to kind of, that topic was important. They wanted to talk about it. And I do have something that um, I really wanted uh, both of your opinion on. on a, I know that there's no answer for this, and I've heard so many callers, so I'll, um, I'll make it brief. But I, uh, I went to Thanksgiving uh, to, with my family, and my, I actually... Um, uh, went to my wife's and I didn't go to my mom's this year. You know, the, you know, the drill, sometimes you just do one or the other. You yeah. yeah. Well, we did my wife and, um, her grandmother is, you know, a plastic situation. She's really religious. And, um, she, she heard I'm atheist. Uh, I don't think I've ever directly told her, but I know that mm-hmm. they talked about it and she calls my wife, you know, I'd say probably about once a month. And sometimes she's crying. She's afraid that me and my kids are going to burn forever. And, yeah. um, she, Gave me a book. Um, now, I've talked to her a lot about just in general how I like to read, and I'm a huge, I, I'm always reading. I just really love to read. And so she gave me a book, I, and I knew it was coming eventually. And she gave me the I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be Atheist book. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm going to just tell you guys my, um, the way that I'm going to handle this situation, and I would just like your opinion on whether or not you think okay. maybe this is. This is good. So grandma gives me this book and this isn't, this is immediately an unfair situation um, because I, first off, she hasn't read the book and I feel like that's kind of a disservice to this whole thing of, Hey, here, look at this point of view. I I don't, I'm not sure of it, but I know that this one is a good one. I I don't understand. So she hasn't cracked that book open. You can tell. And I had my wife ask her just in case she said she hasn't read it. So I will though, because I've already, I mean, to be honest, I've already watched a lot of videos about it's a famous book. Uh, lots of atheists that I follow have read it, and I feel like I have to read it, right? So I'm and going now to, they've converted. What makes this, yeah, but what makes this really unfair is um, she didn't read the book, and once and I will, and then once I'm done, I cannot go back to her. My wife has kind of made it a uh, point, and I don't think she's wrong that it's imperative that I don't share with her my views of the book afterwards. And, oh. uh, and I was going to give her a book too, um, that, um, she's a big, you know, Bible thumper. So I wanted to give her a book that really, she doesn't know the truth about the Bible. Honestly, she thinks Matthew, Mark and Luke and John, they wrote those books. She's, she's got yeah. a very, very, um, I was going to say, view of it. I was going to say, Ooh, there's a religious book that a religious person hasn't read, but they want you to read. It's like, welcome to being an atheist that talks about these things. Because yeah. that applies yeah, to it, the Bible, Lee Strobel's book, name I, a book. Oh, I got, oh, I got, I got actually um, read right. those. Yeah. Well, yeah, you did. That's I, the point is that one. we end up reading them and they... Yeah. So, Corey? Yeah. Um, what I would do in the situation probably won't work for you then. Because what I would do in the situation is say, you gave me this book. Thank you. Let's read it together. And oh, as you go through it, good. as you go through it together, what you're saying is, I care about what you feel. I care about what you're saying. I'm validating you here. And I want to do this together with you. And that way, a piece at a time, you know, you can go through it with, together with them. And there are some parts that you might agree with. So there, you know, there are a lot mm-hmm. of books that mm-hmm. have real basic human truths in them that are just fine. But then when it comes to those things, being to organically be able to say, well, this actually feels disingenuous to me. Or, you know, this mm-hmm. uh, really kind of strawmans my position. Or this really doesn't fit with the way that I understand faith to be. Right, and and right. that's exactly true. I mean, but, uh, what you're saying are examples, but it's true immediately with the title. Yeah, uh, but the title immediately shows that they don't know yeah. what the atheist position is. But if you, mm-hmm. but if you read it together, you might be able to at least a little bit go. Okay, every time you give me a book, I'm reading it with you. So be prepared. Like, yeah. Right. Like and that. then, and then the next thing is, don't say I'm going to read a chapter, you read the chapter, and then we get together and talk about it. Uh-huh. Actually, read it with her. Um, that really could diffuse it. And, and this is just my 
personal, what I would do. It could be a really bad idea in your situation. I don't know your family. I don't know your wife. I don't know your yeah. mother-in-law. So I'm not, I'm not going to say that that is the right way to go in every situation, but that's what I would do. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I think that that's definitely something I hadn't even thought of. Um, and I think that anyone coming at this genuinely, like, uh, you know, supposedly she is, would be open to that. And if she's going to really want me to receive this, then I think that um, she should be, uh, at the very least, enthusiastic in walking through that with me. And I think mm -hmm. that's something I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, probably do. I, I hope that uh, the other part of the uh, issue or question, I guess, is um, that she's, so she's 75, and um, I've gotten, you know, I don't know, I, I hope, I don't want to like sound braggy here, but I've, I've gotten good at, um, and, and this is entirely, I think, thanks to uh, street epistemology. I'm good at making, getting people to the point where they will state their beliefs, and then just letting them sit with that kind of that kind of technique, and, and realizing that a logical person, a lot, most logical people, they don't they don't really like what they believe once they just kind of blueprint everything, and they're like, wait, what what do I believe? And I've gotten my mom in the past um, a year. I've had these conversations with my mom, and she stopped going to church. She had my mom's been really receptive because she she didn't raise me that I had to believe. She she believed. She raised me to question it, and, and yeah. I'm like incredibly lucky that I had a mom like that. And so she, she I've gotten her to kind of walk away from that community, but she has a strong other community of of a diverse group of friends. You know, we live in a really liberal, Indiana is a garbage state, but I'll tell you, Bloomington, where Indiana University is, is a diverse, little, beautiful town full of culture and, and great, great I'm things. So I'm really happy to hear it. Man. Grandma won't be, though. I almost don't want to do this because grandma's life is this religion. I don't think she has anything else. I'm so, in a similar situation with a close friend of mine. Actually, I mean that exact situation with yeah. a few friends of mine and it's a decision making process that uh, is not easy um, and I still struggle with it so one of the things that I would say that's a book that's very helpful that I can recommend is the book A Manual for Creating Atheists people will hear my suggestion of that and say oh no just go watch a bunch of street epistemology videos, mm -hmm. which is also a helpful thing, but actually reading the text of that book um, is a good way to go as well, because the first part of it is just addressing how this sort of thing happens, how people uh, fall into these things, how why people start using faith as an epistemology, particularly if mm -hmm. they haven't previously. Um, what I will say, uh, Corey, is this sounds like, all right, we know what the, you know, your current position is. Um, this is a call I want to, you know, get back to, um, uh, you know, yeah, later, later, yeah. whether or, it's one week or two weeks. Yeah, and, and I can always, I, I will, and I will definitely call back to you and give you guys an update on her yeah. response. I would definitely like to share that with you guys. I, I, I think this will be interesting. I'd definitely love to see how it works out. And, um... I, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping everything works out well for you. Um, if I gave you advice that ruins your life, I'm so sorry in advance. <laughs> but um, I can forgive you guys. Only you guys that talk to you at all. I'll oh, you. you. Yeah, we love all you right. too, man. Well, all right. Corey, we've got a bunch of calls and we're coming up on the end of the show. So call back. We hope that advice helps. And uh, thank you for your thank call you this so week. Much. Absolutely. Take care, buddy. Absolutely.